Hello and welcome. I hope everybody watching this right now is having a fantastic day so far. So I am going to, in this video, cover some common behavioral coping mechanisms of the dismissive avoidant so that if you are a loved one, a friend, a family member, a romantic partner, you're dating somebody who's a dismissive avoidant, or if you're a dismissive avoidant who wants to learn more about themselves and understand why you do what you do and what your coping mechanisms are, um, we are going to cover all of that in this video. So this is going to be taken from a clip from one of our webinars inside PDS. I do four webinars every single week with our students in there. Um, and if you want to check out the full webinar, you can for free using the link in the description box below, and you'll be able to um, check it out for free for seven full days, as well as access to our entire platform. Um, and in this part of the webinar, we are going to be talking about common behavioral coping mechanisms and really how to better understand these things and why dismissive avoidance have these so that you can learn to more deeply connect. So I hope you enjoy. This is part of a four-part series. Again, the webinar covers about eight or nine different major components. Um, so if you want to see the full thing, go check it out. And I really hope you enjoy this. And if you want future videos about the dismissive avoidant and, um, you know, the other components of connecting more deeply with them, or of course, if you want to see how to deeply connect with a fearful avoidant and a series on that, or an anxious preoccupied in a series on that, even a securely attached person, please let me know in the comments below. And I hope you enjoy this clip. common behavioral coping mechanisms you'll see with dismissive avoidance, um, they will stonewall. And these are like the unhealthy ones. They will sometimes be um, dismissive, of course. Um, they may avoid situations in very to very great lengths, avoid discussions, and be passive aggressive. And there are other like more personal ones, like excessive creature comforts, numbing, those sorts of things, withdrawing to decompress. But when it comes to connecting with somebody, um, you know, these can be relationship breaking points, or I don't want to say breaking points, but they can be really painful experiences in a relationship, especially if they're more consistent. So when your loved one, if, if you're on the receiving end of that, when they are stonewalling, call it out. Always call out the things that are harmful to the relationship. Just do it in the appropriate way. So if somebody's stonewalling, say, hey, I get that you need space right now. I can see that you're probably upset or frustrated and I'm experiencing being stonewalled. And so I'll give you your space, but when you're ready, please let's hash it out. Let's talk about whatever's bothering you so that we don't have to go through this silent treatment or this like quiet underlying tension because it's not enjoyable for either of us. Right. So the more you see these things, when you don't like them, call them out, just call them out in a gentle, kind, respectful way. Okay. So the second one is when you see there's a dismissiveness, right? Hey, I know you might be in the middle of something. It also doesn't feel good for me to be on the receiving end of dismissiveness. You know, I can receive that as feeling like I don't matter or my needs aren't important. And I know that's not what you mean by it. But, you know, if you're in the middle of something, try to clearly communicate, hey, I can't be present right now and tell me when you can be present instead. Okay, so we're like holding the relationship accountable to a higher standard around these painful things so that if you're trying to connect with your loved one, or you're going through these painful things, what happens, right? You go through the painful thing, what do you do? You lash out back, you poke back, you shut down back, <laughs> you become more anxious maybe and disrespect the boundary. You like, there's a chain reaction of events. It's not good for the DA and it's not good for you and it's not good for the whole relationship. So the more we can just have like these healthy strategies ahead of time to just call this stuff out, just have a conversation, but do it in a healthy way, the better. Another thing, um, again, we kind of mentioned this briefly earlier, but sometimes DAs are passive aggressive. It definitely represents that they're usually upset about something and didn't really realize it. Sometimes they can be passive aggressive because they're just frustrated in general. Um, but, you know, like about work, for example, and it kind of gets taken out on you or, you know, something like that. Um, again, it won't be like in this super intense way, but it'll be like a two or three out of 10 in terms of like the emotional charge. And nobody likes to be on the receiving end of that. Particularly, I find FAs like that the least. <laughs> APs don't take it as personally. FAs generally do not love passive aggression. I can attest to that personally as a prior FA. <laughs> not my favorite. Um, and so, you know, you call it out as well, okay? And, and you don't leave room for it, right? It's a standard. You don't want passive aggression in your relationship. So for me, like I still do this. I have a couple of family members who sometimes can be passive aggressive. My husband's way better at this, but, um, but 
early days, I called it out for him too. But, um, but if a family member or something, I'll be like, Hey, I, I get the sense you're, you're sort of feeling like a little frustrated and I'm receiving that as a little bit of passive aggression. If there's something you want to talk to me about, please talk to me directly. You know, it doesn't feel good to be on the receiving end of that. If something's upsetting you or bothering you, let's hash it out. Let's have a healthy discussion. Let's not do it this way. And like, it's just easy. Like it, you don't like night conflict and it, the relationship burns into flames. Like it's pretty easy. Like you address it. And, and then sometimes I'll follow up with it, especially if I can tell that person's not that aware of like what they're feeling. I'll just say, and if you don't know what it is right now, like come back and talk to me when you're ready and like, tell me what it is. Like reflect, take some time. Let me know when you're ready to have a proper discussion. And then it's just simple. It's easy. And at the same time, you're not leaving space for that, right? Like you're not making it okay or enabling it. Like, Hey, it's a standard. We're not going to do that. And I'm just going to talk about it this way. So I'm not leaving an ounce of room for you to be passive aggressive and get away with it. And I'm also not going to like lash out back at you. I'm just going to have like a really healthy middle ground of, of discussion for what's okay and what's not. Um, and then the last thing is the avoidance, right? Um, because DAs can really avoid things. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes DAs will really go to great lengths. I've seen lots of funny things and interesting things over the years about the great lengths DAs would go to, to avoid having a hard discussion with their partner. Um, and <laughs> sometimes it was like the partner wants to have a conversation about, um, you know, where to live or moving in or whatever it might be. And sometimes DAs will go to very great lengths to avoid. And like, you have to call out the avoidance as well, right? You have to say in a very loving way, um, Hey, I know this is an uncomfortable conversation. I know it's not your most favorite to have. You may not even have an answer right now for the discussion and that's okay too, but we can't just dance around and not have it because that doesn't make anything solvable for us in the relationship. So like, let's try, let's see what kind of conclusion we can get to. Let's set in the intention here together to not like have an argument. We'll make it like a healthy discussion. And I don't even need like exact answers. I just need a directional output. Like I just need to see directionally where we're going. And we can refine the conversation over time, but avoiding it doesn't feel good for you because it just hangs over your head and it definitely doesn't feel good for me. So I have some exciting news, which is that we are doing a thousand dollars off of our lifetime membership sale to the personal development school, which means you get access to literally everything at PDS for your entire rest of your life. Essentially that entails all of our different courses. You have lifetime access to, I do four live webinars a week, every single week, you can access them ongoing and you get access to all of our daily community events. So I'd love to see you on the other side and you can access it by using the link in the description box below. And so the more we can call these things out, we can kind of use some of these scripts, right? If you want to come back and listen to them or whatever it might be, when you see these things that could potentially be unhealthy in relationships or sabotage them, call them out, do it in a loving, assertive way. Um, and the more you're able to do that, you're not putting up with things that don't feel good to you. And you're definitely not, <laughs> when you don't call them out in a loving way, usually it comes out in a very unloving way instead. And then we just have like a ripple effect. So we're not leaving space for that either. Um, and we're also like making sure we have healthy standards in the relationship so we can keep doing things in a healthy way, which we know is such a big part of like what maintains or sustains the relationship with the DA over time.